Hey guys, we are here to work on 30 paintings in 30 days. It is day 28. Um, we're nearing the home stretch the last few days, and I'm going to do these last thir three videos in real time. I'm not going to fast forward anything. Um, the last few videos I've done before this, uh, there's a few of them where my date stamp is accidentally <laughs> turned to 2012. I don't know how that happened. I didn't even notice it. You guys all mentioned it in the comments. I went back and looked at the cards. Sure enough, there's, I don't know, six cards or so that have the wrong year on them. And so I went back and fixed them. But yeah, sometimes I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. So I have another Rolodex card here and it's got some um, absorbent ground on it. And I'm wanting to practice some more of the painty techniques um, from Jean Haynes book um, that I've been and I've been doing some of them on some of the cards and this is a, a sort of an expressive flower shape and I think I'm going to put two flowers on here I've got the um, book and or inspiration photo off camera that way and I'm just using some purple that I've got on my palette and I put a little bit of paint and now I'm putting some water and I'm kind of you know I'm letting it bleed and run and you were working in watercolor so you want to work lighter because you can always make it darker but you know the watercolor paint for the most part is going to probably stain your paper to a certain extent so You'll be able to lift some of it, which is what I'm doing here now. But you won't ever get it all off. And there's there's lots of ways to lift. You can also, you know, sort of just do that. But you can see that that stain, whether it's raw paper or it's paper with absorbent ground on it, the paint does stain a bit and some colors stain more than others. So you should, you know, just be aware of that when you're painting and that's, you know, one thing that's good about doing these little practice cards. Alright, so then I'm going to continue with the purpley color and I'll probably throw some blue in and let's put some hint of petal shapes. And as we're putting the color down, we're going to put some color down and then we're going to put just water. Let it run where it may and suggest the shapes rather than literally draw them. I love this style of suggestive painting with acrylic. So I'm not surprised at all that I also love it in watercolor. So don't be afraid to throw the hint of the unexpected in there and like for instance, I think I want to toss a little bit of blue in, and I've got some blue on my palette over here that I, you know, kind of mixed up from another painting. So I'll, instead of wasting it and wiping it off with baby wipe, I'll use it. I'll start to give the flower some, some depth and dimension. Let's do the other ones. color. <laughs> Oops, I almost dipped in the blue. Okay, so now, now we'll go in the blue. I like working wet on wet and kind of not knowing where my paint's going to go, where it's going to bleed, what it's going to do and just, you know, kind of pushing it around and working with what it does want to do to give me an interesting picture. I also love that you can do these quick little, like, experiments with these Rolodex cards that, you know, they're not very big. This is the small size Rolodex 
It's like two by three or something like that. It's not very big. to add some darker purple tones. So I'm going to take my violet here straight from my dried blob of violet. And then I'm going to go in with just water. That actually is a lot of purple for me, and I'm okay with that mostly, but I think that, oh, let's see if I can blot some of that up. Okay, that's better. And you're not supposed to call it blotting, you're supposed to call it lifting. So let's take some of our violet and let's thin it, the pigment down a little bit with some water, because I think that would be better. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to go in with some Prussian blue while the violet's still wet. Working quickly. And just that's just splattering on some just plain water. Let's work on the other ones. And I only have limited control over where this is going. And I'm really just laying down colors in a hopefully suggestive way. dry that so that when we put the next layer on the paint doesn't move any more than it already has. But before we do that I want to I wanna do this. Actually before I dry it I'm gonna lift some so that we get some lighter and darker tones. Keeping in mind that when this paint dries, it's going to dry lighter. Okay, now let's dry it. Be careful when you're doing this not to burn your fingers because I know you guys have been seeing me do this like this with it. I have burned my fingers a few times, so I actually don't recommend that you do what I do. Um, if you have a pair of tweezers or something, I would hold it with those. Speaking of which. I actually remembered as I said that that I have some, so let's do that. Okay, you have colors that suggest lightness and brightness and warmth or temperature. Your blues and your violets for the most part are cool colors. So I wanna bring in something that hints at lightness and brightness and warmth. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna to toss in a little bit of yellow. And 
and then I'm going to just spread it around a bit with just some water. Okay, and then I'm going to dry it again. Now I want to bring in another warm color. I have this pinky red here, that, again, that's on my palette from something else. And I want to throw a bit of that in there. And then some water. and then dry it again. Okay, this is where we're going to really make it look like something and we're going to switch to a detail brush. So this is a size zero round Princeton Neptune brush. It's a very small little brush and we're going to use mostly here our Payne's Gray. And we're going to use the paper, use the paint on paper that's dry and we're going to have the paint itself also be as dry as possible and not have it be too watery. And I'm going to go into the first flower center. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to go in here. First and outline the center. And then I'm going to go in with some water. And I'm going to, just with a damp brush that's almost dry, I'm going to see if I can pull out some lines. You want to work quickly while this Payne's Gray is still wet. Yeah. Then I'm going to go in with some paint. And I'm going to do a few... some dots. Just put a blob of kind of watery Payne's gray on there. I'm just going to tap it and force it to run a little bit. There we go. Okay, so let's do that to the other flowers.
just try to barely touch your brush to the paper. You want to get as thin a line as possible. If you have a nail art brush, that would be good for this. And I have one, I just thought I'd try it with this. Alright, let's give ourselves a suggestion of some lines here. Bigger brush holds the bigger brush holds more water, so when you want to have the paint blur and blend, sometimes it's a little easier. I'm not going to outline all the petals or all parts of the petal, I just want to do a few spots. To hint at some more definition. This really is just like a, about doing layers and, you know, work, starting out with your lightest values and working your way darker. You can do it with watercolor, but it is different than you do it with acrylic paint. And the best way to figure out what works for you and how that you want to do it is to just practice and play. And these a little a challenge like these little cards is good for this. like watercolor versus gouache, although I do have some gouache. I don't use them that often. I like that with watercolor all the layers are translucent and you can see, you know, for the most part you can see your previous layers through the one you put on top of it. I like that. here and there. This is that Prussian blue. It's very a very turquoisey color. It's kind of again it's a pop of the unexpected.
like that. I think that's just about done. I might want to lift a little bit here. Let's see. So I just have my damp brush. It doesn't have any paint on it. I want to go back in with some more Payne's Gray and we'll just darken up a few spots. Just tapping the brush down onto the paper. Darkening up some of these lines around the flower centers. And just tapping, tapping, tapping. Just remember when you um, are working with your watercolors and you're practicing that you can always add more color. You just you can't really take it away, and you can't cover it up. I like that. We're gonna call that one done. That was a fun one. I'll zoom in for you, and actually, let's give it a dry first. to mostly dry and we'll zoom in first before I flip it over Oops. there we go so there we have it that's a fun expressive flower pattern inspired by Jean Haynes and we will stamp it and this time we will try to make sure our stamp actually says 2015 on it hello um, okay first I'm going to write on the back here Twenty-eighth of June. Already, the the year is just flying by. And let's see. And yes, it says twenty fifteen. Hello. There we go. June twenty-eighth, twenty fifteen. This is the thirty and thirty day challenge. This is number twenty-eight. There you have it. I hope it gave you some ideas of what you can do. Just go out there and play and have some fun. And above all else. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later.